Welcome back to another Real Talk Reaction. This one's for Ted Lasso Season 3, Episode Number 6. The algorithm wants you to like and subscribe so we can keep coming up. Thank you. Uh, a couple comments from the last episode, starting with Executive Producer Jeremy, who says, I also feel like... Oops, somebody must just... Um, I also feel like the Zava storyline was a bit underwhelming, but I'll be honest, I'm glad he's gone. I didn't re really like how the team was becoming all about Zava and Ted wasn't really doing anything about it. Yeah. It was just happening. I was with Jamie making faces every time Zava spoke, just rolling your eyes hard. Um, I guess I was right when I thought there were vibes between Jack and Keely. I was really surprised because I didn't get the vibes until it happened and I was like, oh, yeah. this is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, I was also unfortunately right that Keely was going to be let down by Shandy, who I'm also kind of glad is gone. Um, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, we all I think we all seen that. Yeah, that one was a, that one was a, uh, a little bit more obvious. Um, I like the way things went with the hostess and waitress and Nate. When she was first introduced last season, she was highly rude, not wanting to put him and his family in front of the window because she didn't want people walking by, looking in and seeing him and his family there, which just seems wrong. But when they brought her back this season, the vibe seemed a little different. She was still being rude and getting his name wrong repeatedly, but it seemed like she was doing it to mess with him a little bit more, like she was having fun with him a little, rather than completely complete disdain from the previous season season yeah. which was already an interesting change and now she's joining him for baklava is that how you say it baklava. yeah baklava um with what we've seen from nate in the last couple of episodes i wonder if we can get the old nate back or even a new nate that's not terrible even if he's still coaching for rupert also i love how dark roy got and everyone's reaction when he's talk about how he would deal with bullies that shit was <laughs> yeah. fire like he was super committed yeah, he, and he, he wasn't he, fucking around no he it wasn't a joke no. he was dead ass um this was a great episode and a great reaction. I look forward to the next. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, then Nate comes in to say, I think once the team gets back on a winning streak, Zava will want to come out of retirement and rejoin them, but this time the team will 100% back Jamie, yeah. restoring his confidence. I can see that. I mean, I can kind of see that too. Yeah. Um, Zava could then be released and picked up by West Ham so that we have an extra wrinkle to the next uh, West Ham versus Richmond match. It would also create some dysfunction at West Ham because Zava wouldn't listen to Nate and Nate wouldn't know how to handle Zava. Very good predictions. Did, did, you, did write? you write the episode? <laughs> <laughs> did you write the rest that of the is, season? That is on point. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> all right, let's jump into the next episode right now. Mostly Garrett. Keep the boating, and... Oh, my God! 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 Ain't nothing friendly about what I have out here. They call exhibition matches friendly. Man, the sport drives me nuts. <laughs> Aston Vicka, my apologies. No, you've come all the way from Amsterdam to be at Ajax to be such rude hosts. My man, you've been more than gracious. Well, especially given the circumstances. <laughs> <sighs> The owner is ours completely, but it is pronounced Johan Kruijf. Oh, still. God, this seems depressing. Work, I think. We need an outer stress on the restart. Should we all take naps so we can stay bleeding? No. We push through, and we all meet the lobby, 5 o'clock shot. Yeah! yeah! If we push through... Today's gonna be magical! <laughs> Not for you, Tom! Eh? Let's go! Are you serious? You know I'm fucking on the from training! What about my stuff? What about my stuff? Right. <laughs> Bring this shit out! Try this away, please. In the tracks? Let's go! Hey, sick. Hey. You have fun. Gonna see Not the sight. It's raining. Amsterdam. Don't actually come up with you. Right. 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 Right.
Our first stop, the red light district. Oh. Is it for Origins, they find the 13th century. Uh. That's mad, isn't it? Oh, coach, this way. <laughs> this is the world famous Skinny Bridge! <laughs> I've seen in major motion picture James Bond's Diamonds Are Forever! So we're on a fucking sightseeing shit, you try it. Right, next stop, Amsterdam's finished house. Right. Gonna so blow you mind you mind really work out. Right. Go see some James is so like right. it's a big ass kid. Give me two things, Hello. Stinky. What's wrong? Look at the That's why those bikes were coming non stop. Right? Remember when Jordan wouldn't wear Reebok in the 92 Olympics? Of course. 74 World Cup, Kraut refuses to wear Adidas. They gotta make him a special two-stripe shirt. He's a badass. Ooh. But he was also a paragon of the 60s, so he was bigger than Jordan. Really? He was like Jordan and John Lennon combined. Oh, that's cool. You took a place to eat yet? Oh, shoot, no, I forgot. Mm. On it. Mm. Oh, let's see. Oh, hey, this could be good. Yankee Doodle Burger Bar. An authentic American dining experience <laughs> with American-sized horses. Why we go well, I could definitely go for a taste of home. How's that sound, Coach? What's it rated? Uh, 2.7. Out of five. Have fun tonight. Higgins, what we got? Right, uh, this tonight's the night young William here becomes a man. Cheers. Wait, look what he got on, though. The trench coat with and the bus. Wait, what is happening? What is he? What, what is he? Right, it was like that. You know really. Yeah, man. We're on your home turf. He probably might for a while out of the way. Okay, tourists. Thank you for getting all those terrible ideas out of the way. <laughs> now listen, my cousin, Martin Garrix, <laughs> is DJing at a private all night party. We're talking drinking, dancing, and women into the morning, which is when they'll be serving a hearty breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, sorry, sorry, I think I need to bow out. Yeah, I ate some pickled herring earlier, and now my stomach's bothering me. You're gonna miss the life sex show, bro. You mean the party. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear all the dirty details. <laughs> Good luck, James. See you later. Yeah. 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 Right, so it seems like this private party is the obvious answer? Yeah. Okay, great. You just gotta take the bus to Groningen, which is only a two hour drive. Two hours? What? Okay, oh, it breezes okay. okay. Hey, 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 amigos, why don't we just split up? There you go, sweetie. Hey, can I ask? Do you know who I am? I gotta tell you a secret. Tonight, you're wherever you want to be. Hmm? You stick around for the party there, Rob. Thunderdome. Good vibes, good place to make friends. Sounds so. fun, I'm in. Trent, hey, uh, can I get a drink for my work equipment, please? Sorry, did you say Thunderdome? Mm-hmm. Ah. Oh, I think I'm in the wrong place. My mistake. Cheers. It happens all the time. So, uh, should I be worried about some giant Dutch woman wandering on here and strangling me for wearing her clothes? No. <laughs> Things are over between us, and I've been so for some time, so don't worry. Sorry, I didn't mean to. You don't need to tell me any of the details. She was unfaithful. I loved her very much. So it wrapped me and I came dangerously close to destroying our family on it. But then, with time, I realized that this thing didn't happen to me, it happened for me. You know? Cheers. Prost. Proust. 
Prost. 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 Is it? Hmm. Wait, is this some Dutch bloke singing She Believes in Me by Kenny Rogers? Whoa, 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 whoa. This Dutch bloke is the great Andre Hazes and he's singing Zij Geloofde Mij, all right? Okay. And yes, the gambling man did it first. The gambling man. Hey, schrijf me naar je lief. Tot een ieder. Mij ontdekt en zie. And who knows, maybe on some special night. Because you know, I can see, babe. If my song's right. I'm gonna carry up shit. Come on! This is so thank you. <laughs> she's so cute and she's just being herself. How's that gonna help anyone? In there. There you go. Good, good. I can't turn it off. Maybe it's like this way, this way. I can't turn it off. Listen, you're trying to change. It's all about balance, man. Just like dribbling. If you can dribble, you can balance. That's it. Yeah, that's good. You're doing it. All right, mate. All right. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I'm doing it. Let's go find a fucking windmill. All right, wait for me. That was so cute, babe. Sitting here. Look, well, yeah, you just have to pick good seats. Yeah, but these are so exposed. Oh no! It's like the time I was front and center in an improv comedy show. Yes, I think baby. I about how I look like a boss boy. It's okay. You, you did great. Here's a drink. Thank you. Thank you for doing this, Will. One pilgrim alone is merely a zealot, but two pilgrims together—that's a pilgrimage. Club. Welcome to Jazz Cafe Alto. My name is Dante Charles and we are the cartel. Miles Davis once said this. That was the second time I came out to that. <laughs> this time, however, she believed me. Now we're closer than ever. And your daughter? She's never been happier. Aww. My point is, it was really difficult to hold on to that secret. But I'm not a professional athlete. How do you do it? Well. And Frank heard those same bells every night. Yeah, she lived just there. Oh, my body's big pink triangle. I thought she was in there. I think doesn't expect to get from life what one has already learned it cannot give. Rather, one begins to see that life is a kind of sowing time. And the harvest is not yet here. He was just a humble preacher's son. And yes, he had his demons, but they never stopped him from searching for beauty. Because when you find beauty, you find inspiration. If... Coach, 
I know that you have your best interests at heart or, or the clubs anyway, even though you're clearly upset about something else, you say, you're out with me. I'm trying to say is, I'm sorry for being a dick earlier. I've been to Amsterdam twice. When I was 14, my dad was trying to get back with my mum and he was acting like some kind of fucking super dad or some shit and he brought me out here for some father's son bonding time. Anyway, he said it was to watch a football match. After the game, he took me to the red light district from a real present. He, uh, he took me to lose my virginity ever to those ladies behind the windows. Jesus. You must have been traumatising. No. She loved it. <laughs> oh, for me? Sorry, me, me. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, a couple of years later, my mum brought me back here. I went to museums and did all the tours and it's the first time I had a tour boy group. Never forget that time. Even though my dad weren't here, he was still kind of there with us, you know. I was a dick today too. Oh Sorry. God. I think Keeney's got a girlfriend. Hmm. Let's go find us some women, though, eh? Yeah. You're the cutest ever. Look at them sharing their feelings and talking. They can't. Yeah. 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 Uh, Howdy, Potter. Hey there. Welcome to Yankee Doodle Burger Barn. Table for one? Uh, yes, please, yeah. Hey, where in the States are you from? Melbourne. Plenty of room tonight. Where would you like to sit? Windy City, uh, Big Apple, or Hollywood? Oh, well, tell Mama that Roxy Hart is coming home. Dipshits. <laughs> We're in Chicago. Windy City? Great, mate. Giddy up. I don't know. 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 Hey, so, uh, how does this one look? Arthur. Why'd you bring me this one? It's the best one. TSA. Uh, do you know where triangles come from, Dave? I don't know. God dropped a square on the floor and broke in half long ways or something? Oopsie. No, Dave. <laughs> it's debated that the triangle was first defined by Pythagoras as any God, shape with three amazing. sides and three corners. That's a good term. But throughout history, many believe that triangles have held special powers. From the Holy Trinity of Christianity to the Trikaya of Buddhism, there's also that spooky eye thing on the back of the one dollar bill. Oh, yeah. In some Native American cultures, the triangle symbolizes home. I'm sorry, Europeans kicked all them folks out of the triangle. But the concept of the triangle reached its zenith in 1989 when a man called Tex Winter, an assistant coach for your Chicago Bulls, for your Chicago triangle Bulls. offense. The central component of which was for a player to always have two available teammates to whom he could pass the ball. These three players formed the triangle. Bingo, Ringo. But that was never the only. Nobody had a good night. They all deserve it. They were crappy. It's really rough. I guess it was. Uh, 
Let's get lost. As a lost in each other's eyes. That's all we can see. Just prove it. Let's get lost. Let them so hard. Let's get lost. Let them so hard. Let's get lost. Let them so hard. Let them so hard. Thou think us rather rude. Let's tell the world we're in that crazy mood. Let's be friends in Vanilla vodka is only seven. Let's get crossed up everybody's legs. Oh, I love Trent so much. To celebrate this night we found each other. I won't forget you. It's not even you. You're right. People get Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah, they're the most lovely couple, and they invited me for a reason. 
from June. We invited me for a new show. <laughs> so that's what happened. So there was no drama. Yeah. It was all right, good. Coach? Hey, Coach. Wait, let me guess. Piggy Stardust. Rashers to Rashers, oink to oink. Love it. <laughs> you are there and get busy, buddy. Sorry hey. about last night. No, 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 it's okay. I'm sorry. No, I shouldn't let you wander around out there all alone with a head full of tea. Uh, good thing I was a dud batch. What's that? I wasn't feeling anything. So I called Kenneth. He tried it. A couple hours later, calls me up totally contrite. Confirmed. Dud batch. Huh. It happens. Uh, I had a... Uh, let me ask you a question. Is this anything? Is this the same thing? Because I was working on it at the restaurant last night. The way I see it, you've been playing too rich, you know? Our guys need freedom. Go wherever they want to go. All their guts, their hearts. Yeah, as long as they remember to fill in the space that someone left behind. They gotta have one another's backs, that's for sure. But, you know, it's just constant, non-stop motion. Just going from position to position until positions don't really, um, even exist anymore. It's fast, fluid, free. With full support. You come up with this yourself? Yeah. Congrats. You should call it total football. Ooh, I like that. Which was invented right here in Holland in the 70s. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, cool. Total football. Well, how would I come up with that? Room for one more? Yay! Hey, boss. So, 12 unanswered texts, three unha ha gifts. Oh, you ain't finna believe this. We do? Oh, sorry, Dad. My phone is at the bottom of a canal. Is that Keats? Nope. Hey, Will. How we looking? Uh, we're too short. Who's missing? Roy and Jamie. Oh, here they go in the way. Oh. <laughs> Okay, back <laughs> <laughs> it was episode six of Ted Lasso, and now I understand why the show had to run just a little longer than it normally does because everything had to have freedom, a little bit more breathing room in this one, so everybody can get their time to shine. And I think this episode was well deserved over the very, very, very bad season that they've been having thus far, and feeling the type of way that they've been feeling with all the damn um, ales they've been taking. Uh, and I think it, it really made it feel like a really, really good episode right here with just all the things working. I love Ted finally getting in his zone and figuring out some things. Hopefully we can take this back, take this triangle uh, um, offensive back and maybe we can win a game too. And um, that, would, that would just be a good turnaround for them. And I love how the crew kept all night long trying to decide where they was going to go, what they was going to do, if they was going to get something to eat, don't get nothing to eat. But then they just ended up playing a game right there at the thing. And that just worked out to be just awesome. Even with them, um, uh, Rory. Roy. I mean, Roy and um, Jamie. Uh, Jamie. That worked out too, man. I mean, look, everything tonight, the jazz, it, it was just all popping. And then, I mean, man, um, Rebecca. Rebecca, man. Rebecca just, she had like, a wild night for real with her mystery man. They still didn't even know each other's name. They just walked away. I mean, I hope that worked out. That could be the same. I don't think so. I think out. that was just really sweet. That was sweet. just one of them sweet things. It was things. like, I'll never forget you. And he's like, you yeah. might have Alzheimer's. Like, this is not going to be something long term. You're nah, just here. Okay. But I thought it was. Oh. She needed that. She oh, really so did sweet. need that. So I had a lot of fun with this episode, man. It's just it's just so cuddly and good and, and, and rainbows and cushion balls. And, it's and so uh, gizizic. It's, yeah, it's, what, it's whatever gizizic. you said. It's literally that. That's what this episode. That's was. exactly what it was. And so I can't wait to see another episode. 
Um, so this is the most Ted Lasso episode of the season to me. Like, I, I think it was intentional as far as like the roller coaster of emotions in the first five episodes because we're in a funk, right? The season felt like it was in a funk, and that was intentionally because of the situation. But this episode gave me life. I loved all of it, um, and I appreciated the fact that they extended it so that everybody's excuse me, heart could breathe and actually get the time that it needed. So I'm going to just go through each story just quickly and briefly. Um, but the Rebecca and the, the Dutch gentleman, so sweet and just, it was so charming and like non-threatening. It just, it was just so sweet. I loved it so much. And I love that Rebecca was touched too, because he obviously has a daughter and that's why he kissed her foot because he's used mm -hmm. to like fixing her boo-boos. Um, I thought that was really sweet. And I love the fact that he kept saying that I don't know the word now, um, but I feel like that should have been the name of the episode because like the whole episode had that like who you're spending time with, the moments that you have, just I don't know how that translates either and I'm sure I'm going to look this up afterwards, but that definitely set the entire tone as far as what this episode was, his describing what that word means. So I thought that was just really great and to see uh, Rebecca having a chance to be completely disconnected from her phone, which she is constantly plugged yeah, into, yeah. and just being so completely present with like another human being and just in the moment was just, oh, I felt so great for her. You can see like how that translates. For one, she was so herself even in that moment, like singing without being prompted mm -hmm. to, which typically she doesn't do. And then the fact that she carried that with her to the bus too and like so, I just, I, I'm just so happy for it. It was so yeah. sweet and I loved it so much. Um, another big standout for me was Trent. I thought Trent was incredible. Like, I was so nervous when we saw that he saw Colin kissing and, like, I got nervous again when yeah, he was like, why would I was like, is he gonna blackmail him or something? Yeah. Um, but for him to share his story that, you know, he was in the closet and he had to come out to his wife and his kid, which was really scary. Um, and then also the respect he has for Colin as a footballer, as a professional athlete, which he recognizes as an even elevated situation. And Colin talking about Sharon and about the ache that he realizes he has because he wants his two, he wants his two separate lives to be just his life. Just being, and I thought the way that he expressed that so, uh, so directly as far as just being able to celebrate a game by kissing his person, mm -hmm. I thought that was just so well said and like, almost broke your heart that that's something he has to worry about and he can't just do like yeah. he has to think about um so really really love that um i love the struggle the team had as far as figuring out what they want to do and i love it so much that they absolutely are they finally settled on sam's idea which wasn't staying in and watching a movie but staying in and having a pillow fight which is such a sam suggestion yeah, yeah. and the fact that the captain was like absolutely this is what we're doing it was just so sweet and i loved it so much and they needed a chance and i appreciate the captain too being like putting his foot down like we're not going off and doing separate things we need this so bad right, as a team right. um and i'm glad they did something heartfelt and fun and silly and goofy because it's been so serious and heavy the last few weeks because of the losing streak they've been on so this just felt so therapeutic and so like uh refreshing and I loved I absolutely love that as well um Roy and Jamie I'm so impressed with the writing of these two characters I say this every episode but like they literally were riding their bikes and talking about their feelings which is something that you would never ever picture back in season one the fact that uh, Jamie taught now Roy how to write a spell. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't yeah, even. I can't even. I can't with these two. Like, I literally can't. It melts my heart to pieces. So that was really great. Both of them talking about, you know, Roy first talking about uh, the fact that he couldn't write his bag because it was something that like his granddad was going to do I and mean, after his granddad passed he couldn't bring himself back to riding a bike. Yeah. Um, and Jamie recognizing that familiar you know, connection and being like, I got you, bro. And then sticking with it, even though Roy's fighting him tooth and nail. And then the conversation, obviously riding, riding the bikes together where Jamie got to share some of his stuff too. Again, the fact that they're being like transparent and like Roy's comfortable with saying anything that's feeling related just speaks so much uh, volume to like their development. Um, not only individual as individuals, but like what the dynamic of their relationship is now, which I cannot get enough of. I love it yeah, so much. Yeah. And I really like too when Roy did say something about Keely 
having a girlfriend um, that Jamie was like, we don't have to get into this. I know it's mad awkward. Let's go find the, the windmills. Like, he yeah. didn't, like, yeah. press it, but he's like, I appreciate that you share that with me. I also loved Rebecca's line to Roy being like, she's somewhere where someone uh, feels like they're worthy of having Keely, mm -hmm. which I think, like, whew, that was a dagger, but in the best possible way. Like, the only reason why you're not with Keely now is because you don't think you deserve her. Yeah. Oh, so good. Um, and then, ultimately, uh, Ted... You know, trying to find inspiration, which he has been struggling this entire season, which is so difficult to watch because he's been the inspiration in the first two seasons. Um, so the fact that, like, we get to a point now where he had to go back home in order to be inspired here, essentially. Like, mm -hmm. he had to do this restaurant, which made him comfortable, made him realize all the things he missed. I love that it was the Chicago Bulls offense that inspired yeah, him yeah, too. Yeah. That was so great. Yeah. Um, and now the fact that he's introduced that and Beard's like, this is absolutely something we can do, has me hyped as hell for the rest of the season. So I know I, I spoke a lot, but I absolutely love this episode through and through. It is all, the, it is full on Ted Lasso at this point, And I can't oh, yeah. wait to see where it goes from here. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, look, thank you guys again for watching another Real Talk Reaction for Ted Lasso Season 3, Episode Number 6. And until next time, peace.